What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Atheist Roundtable. And it's UDC. We got we got a debate going on tonight. Sweaty Eddie, what's up? Yeah, I'm ready, baby. I am ready. I man, a boxing match, punches thrown, sweat flying. Must be, they're gonna have to make it quick because the UFC coming on too. So yeah, nobody cares about UFC right now. Right. Get well, out I'll get out. get out of here. Get out. <laughs> Have priorities right now, Eddie. Uh, well, before we jump in the action, I do want to make sure everybody remembers that March 20th, we have the first ever Ultimate Debate Championship tournament. Um, and I think we have about uh I don't I don't want to misquote it. it's either 550 or 600 bones for the winner. Um, so it's getting up there. And for those that want to sponsor, um, you can still do that and your either name or your channel or whatever organization, your logo, uh, whatever you want, will be part of all the marketing materials leading up to in the day of, uh, and it's going to be exciting. So <clears throat> I am still looking for a couple more uh, judges uh, and or mods uh, or, or refs. If you want to be a part of that, email me at austin at tart.live. Love to uh, have you help out. And uh, it's going to be it's gonna be an exciting afternoon. Um, it's going to be it's going to be fun. So uh, Eddie, you're going to be throwing your hat in the ring there. You you excited? You looking forward to it? Yeah, man, I am excited. You know, I mean, I'm listening to all these shows and my name's not even getting mentioned. So I'm like, okay, that's all good. It's all against me. So I ain't got nothing to lose, baby. I'm coming yeah. in just throwing. Mm, mm, mm. So mm, 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 mm. jab, yeah. jab, jab, hook, jab. Hook. Of you gave me the hardest possible bracket ever. <laughs> you're, welcome. Oh. you're welcome. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Well, uh. Uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's uh, let's let's get these rowdy fellows up here. What's up, everybody? Doing good. Oh, how you doing? Let's oh. not all say it at once. I mean, <laughs> y'all be quiet, man. Y'all are way too hyped for this. So, Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing good. How about everybody else? Good, good. Uh, just uh, real quick, tell everybody uh, who you are, if you have anything going on, where they can find anything like that you want them to know. Well, my name's Matthew Adams. Most people who are probably that know me watching this show probably know me just from Facebook debate groups. Uh, although I have, uh, I am in the process. I don't know when it'll happen, but maybe getting a YouTube channel. It's not going to be anything fancy, but I'm I'm working on it. But I'm kind of relying on my kids to set that up for me. So uh, we'll see when they decide to do that. But that's about it. I mean, you can find me in, in most of the debate chats uh, on Facebook. And I, I am in one on Discord, but I don't, I'm not really active uh, in those that group as much. <clears throat> okay, very good, very good. And then uh, uh, Tim, I mean, Tom T-Jump uh, is with us again. Uh, Tom, where do they find you? What do you have going on? Uh, they can find me at youtube.com slash tjump i am a professional bathtub installer i install bath yes. you can find that out on my channel it's great and uh where, your uh only fans fans only page where's that at uh you can find it at the secret links on the tart youtube route page <laughs> very good and uh dr josh what do you got going on no, I just finished up my last uh, gynecology session. So, you know, that's that's always <laughs> nice. But uh, appreciate that. No, um, <laughs> over at uh, Digital Hammurabi, uh, Megan has just opened up the uh, the uh, first round of the Humans Against Poor Scholarship scholarship program. So, uh, you know, if you're interested as a PhD student in ancient Near Eastern studies um, and getting a $2,000 scholarship, send us send us an email. But I uh, just finished the rough draft of my uh, forthcoming book, which should be out here in the summer, The Atheist Handbook to the Old Testament. So, yep. pretty good. Huh. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> That'll be another required reading for those that are part of the Atheist Roundtable. Uh, just just be prepared. And then uh, last but not least, Shweddy Eddie. What you got going on, man? I really hate that name, Moss. Shweddy really Eddie. Same stuff, different day. I'm just here to watch them duke it out, baby. Cool. Don't, don't you, you have like a YouTube channel or something, right? Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was time for that, Oz. Um, <laughs> I'm ADD. I wasn't paying attention. Yes, Brute Facts, uh, YouTube, and all the major pod, 
podcast uh, platforms. Thanks, Eddie. Appreciate <laughs> you. Uh, and then uh, somebody, there's a little bit of an echo uh, coming from somebody. Um, and uh, I will adjust my lighting when we are done here. I, I look like a, a, I look like a young version of Donald Trump right now with all the orange. Um, but uh, for those watching and listening, uh, this will be the format tonight. We'll have 10-minute uh, uh, opening statements, 10-minute uh, uh, cross-examination, 40-minute open discussion, and then 10-minute close. And then we'll do a little Q's and the A's action uh, at the end. And then Dr. Josh is the ref tonight, so he will make sure that the debate stays on topic. Uh, if he feels like uh, there may be a misunderstanding, jump in, maybe have them steal man uh, or whatever he feels best to make sure uh, everything's going uh, as as it should. So. Uh, as long as everybody is good, the um, the only thing we didn't, uh, tell, and, and this is my bad, I do this uh, all the time, uh, Matt or Tom, whoever wants to go first, we didn't decide it because this is one that um, I should have asked be backstage, but I didn't, so that's my fault. My dogs are barking. Let's let him go first. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, Matt. Uh, as soon as uh, I'll, I'll take Eddie and I off screen, and then uh, once you guys come back up, as soon as you start to speak, we will start the timer and uh, let's uh, let's get it in. All right, so Matt, I guess you're uh, you're starting us off. Ten minute opening. Have at it. Thank you, muted boss. It's not a good start. How's that game going, Tom? It's going good. I've already beaten the hardest difficulty. It's going on my cleanup run to get all the trophies. Is it Contra? Is that what it is? No, it's uh, Dark Siders <laughs> 3. Contra. Because up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, select, start, right? That's the. Yeah, for the. Nintendo Did I just seriously it? date myself? Is that what that is? That's, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Super Mario easy. Brothers 3. You know, I remember when that came out. That was the ship. I can debate you on this if you want. On what? Oh, uh, oh, uh, okay. I have been rescued. Thank you, Matt. Can, can you hear? Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, the screen locked up again on me, so uh, eventually I'm going to get a better device here to do this with. Uh, but sorry about that. But okay, I'm I'm ready. Uh, so why Christianity, I believe, best conforms uh, to reality as opposed to atheism. I think Christians and theists in general have a lot of weapons at their disposal to justify their belief that there is God. Uh, arguments like contingency arguments, ontological arguments, cosmological, theological, Occam's razor, moral arguments, uh, existence of consciousness, the existence of theism, the existence of myths and world religions that are pantheistic, deistic, and theistic in nature which uh, demonstrate what Ecclesiastes says, that uh, God has put eternity in man's heart, but he has not understood it. But specifically, this is about what best conforms with reality. And I believe Christianity stands uh, distinct from all other religions in that it best conforms with reality. Um, uh, first of all, the overwhelming historical evidence for Jesus Christ and his influence on the world and history, including the existence of the church, the Bible, uh, personal revelation of who God is through Jesus Christ are just two or three um, major examples. As a Christian, if Jesus is whom he claimed to be, I would expect his influence to be easily observed in our reality. And it is. The existence of Jesus Christ is not even really a serious debate among scholars. They generally agree on a few things that aren't even really controversial. The existence of Jesus, Jesus died by crucifixion. Uh, the disciples can, were convinced that he rose from the dead. Paul, who was uh, an enemy, later became a Christian. Uh, James, the brother of Jesus, became a Christian. 
uh, the tomb was empty and the claims of Jesus Christ's resurrection being traced back to the first century. The influence of Jesus Christ is so powerful that the Romans adopted the modern dating system centered around the closest estimation to his birth. So he split history. We even can't escape the influence of Christianity on science and philosophy. Folks like uh, Francis Bacon, who was probably best known for promoting the scientific method, was influenced by Christianity. Some of our oldest universities were founded by Christians. Harvard and Yale uh, were Puritan. Princeton, Presbyterian, Oxford University, Cambridge University, St. Andrews, Edinburgh, all had Christian influences in their founding. According to educationstateuniversity.com, many of the non-state founded universities were founded by Christian organizations in the U.S. By 1881, 80% of all schools of higher learning were church-related. <clears throat> Even Christian private schools, college level and below, are often favored for better, richer education than public schools and universities. So we can't even escape the influence of Christianity and science, and especially medicine, which should come as no surprise since we are called to be the hands and feet of Christ and bind up the broken. Uh, Christians founded many charitable organizations as well, which are easily seen in reality. The American Red Cross, the YMCA, the Salvation Army, just to name a few. Tom himself has benefited from Christian philosophers such as Rene Descartes, who gave him the foundation he begins with, I think, therefore I am. But he also said that theism is the result of type one and type two delusions, which would undercut his whole foundation for thought and the quest for knowledge. Who could trust a delusional person to give anyone a rational, trustworthy foundation for thought? But nonetheless, Tom can't even escape Christianity in his own reality of philosophy and science that he values so highly. <clears throat> the influence of Jesus in reality in our modern culture is undisputable. Moral ideas and the way we conduct society through our laws are easily traced to have benefited greatly from the Bible and the teachings of Jesus Christ. Um, Bart Ehrman says this about the Bible or um, about Jesus Christ and the Bible. But he says, one could easily argue that Jesus is the most important person in the history of the West, looked at from a historical, social, or cultural perspective, quite apart from his religious significance. And so, of course, the earliest sources of information we have about him, the New Testament Gospels, are supremely important, and not just the Gospels, but all the books of the New Testament. Jordan Peterson, when asked about the existence of God, said this, he said, I'm conditioned even though he, he lives his life as he believes in God, uh, he says, I'm conditioned in every cell as a consequence of the Judeo-Christian worldview. And he later says, we are saturated in Judeo-Christian ethics. Jesus made three bold statements concerning the future that are easily observed in our modern reality. That he did not come to change the law and prophets, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, heaven and earth, will pass away, but not one, an iota, not a dot, will pass away from the law until all is accomplished. Today, we still have access to the law and prophets reminding us of the greatness of God and the um, failures of man. <clears throat> uh, and Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Today, we have the words of Jesus Christ, which are easily available for those in civilized societies that have benefited from Jesus Christ and remind us of the love the Father has for us through the Son. So we can thank God for all these advancements in science that gave us the technology in which scripture is just a click away uh, on our phones that we carry in our pockets or printed in a book for our reading. And I expect to see this based on scripture. Uh, third, the existence of the church today. Peter, when asked by Jesus, who do you say that I am? Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus told Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this but the, to Peter, but it was his father in heaven. Jesus said, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Today, the church exists that demonstrates uh, Jesus' words are accurate. Believers confessing to have received this same personal revelation from God as to the identity of his son. We testify to the spirit of truth, which Jesus said the world cannot accept because it neither sees him or knows him. But we know him because he dwells within. 
And we observe Christians making this confession today. Uh, we also observe mocking and criticizing of non-believers or uh, from non-believers concerning the gospel as well. And this would be expected. Uh, Paul says the natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God for they are folly to him. And he is not capable, able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. He also says this, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. He says, where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. As science has demonstrated through studies, children, even as early as three or four, show signs of looking for meaning and purpose and have concepts of eternity and a higher power that sim than simply what the physical world has to offer. The gospel of Christ has transformed innumerable amounts of lives <clears throat> through history and has moved people to accomplish things they never would have on their own. Martin Luther King Jr. said this about Christianity. Christianity affirms that the heart of reality is a heart, a loving father who works through history for the salvation of his children. Man cannot save himself for man is not the measure of all things and humanity is not God. Bound by chains of his own sin and finiteness, man needs a savior. So in order to, for Tom to argue that atheism best corresponds with reality, he's going to have to explain all that I just argued away using an evolutionary perspective without God. If he is simply going to argue it is the result of type one and type two delusions, and that there is no evidence for God, he's going to have to give a good argument as to why the delusions of grandeur of a simple son of a carpenter in an obscure town called Nazareth, a man of Jeru's Jewish heritage, transform society on the scale that we benefit from today. In other words, Tom will have to demonstrate a far grander miracle than Jesus actually being the son of the living God. And that is my opening statement. All right. Thank you, Matt. And uh, T-Jump, we turn it over to you. Typing up that last statement because it was so hilarious. Uh, made... Jesus made more of a profound impact in society is more uh, significant than being the son of a God. So apparently that's great. All right. Uh, so thanks. Thanks for having me on guys. Appreciate it. The topic tonight is which best corresponds to reality, science or atheism. And the answer is clearly atheism. Uh, in order to answer the question, which ideology best conforms to reality, we have to have this thing called evidence, which is, what we use to differentiate imagination from reality, we have to show that our worldview corresponds to reality. It isn't just something made up in our heads uh, as opposed to someone else's. And we use evidence to do this. And our best form of evidence is science. So science uh, doesn't say anything about a God. There's no evidence to indicate a God whatsoever, which is why the vast majority of scientists in every academic field are atheists. Everything points against a God. It's more likely just random chance. And asserting anything beyond the science is unreasonable. It's completely made up fairy tale stuff. Like you could say in any gap in science, ah, a fairy did that or a leprechaun or a God did that. Is that evidence of those things? No, it's not evidence of anything. Like anyone can just make up a placeholder to fit in that, including scientists. We don't do that because it's not good evidence. So what evidence is, is that which can differentiate meditation from reality. And what we have to do that is testable predictions. And the thing that can do that is science. And science says there's no God anywhere in anything we've ever discovered or indicated by anything we've ever discovered. All of the philosophical arguments presented by theists can be demonstrably proven false. And if you think they actually work for some reason, we can use them to support naturalistic pantheism, which is a kind of scientific atheism. And it works for that better or equal to a God in every case. So none of the arguments... Uh, in any way indicate a God, which means so far there's no evidence for God from science or philosophy. Uh, now, we, no one really cares what scientists in the past believe. The fact that they were influenced by religion isn't evidence that it was true. Like, okay, well, they believe lots of silly things in the past. Ptolemy believed that the sun ruled around the earth. Does that make it true? No. So the fact that they were influenced by that is not evidence. The fact that there are churches who believe is not evidence. The fact that Jesus made a profound impact is not evidence that it's true. It just means that there's a human who had an impact on other humans. Like 
every profound human in human history and every religion in human history exactly the same. There's nothing special about that whatsoever. So there's no evidence whatsoever that Jesus or any prophet is connected to any ultimate being in the universe. And the best evidence we have indicates that the fundamental nature of reality is some natural unconscious thing that's just a force or a law or a quantum particle of some kind. That is the most supported position in physics and biology and chemistry, geology, psychology, neurology. There's no evidence of a soul, no evidence of free will, no evidence of anything beyond the physical material world. So the best conclusion is, is like, hey, everything we see around us is physical material. Uh, whatever the fundamental nature of reality is, is probably going to be of the same kind of stuff saying that there's a mind there. It's just an anthropocentric fallacy of saying, ah, we have a mind. We really like minds. Let's just say that there's one at the fundamental nature of reality too, for some strange reason, that this one phenomenon that we only see in these very small pockets of reality, less than 0.0000001% of the world, is somehow in the fundamental nature of reality because it makes us feel good is complete nonsense. There is no evidence for God whatsoever. Uh, all of the evidence in science says, nope, it's just a natural thing. Amplitudehedron, emergent space-time, quantum mechanics or something, those are all significantly better. And so any of the actual theories in physics are better theories that more correspond to reality than religion, which is why all the physicists go with those and don't say anything about religion. To quote Sean Quarrell, if all of the cosmologists were polled and they asked, did God have anything to do with the Big Bang? They're all going to resoundingly say no. So yeah, there's there's no basis to conclude religion and God have anything to do with anything we see in reality whatsoever. The only reasonable conclusion is, yeah, atheism, that there's no God. There's no reason to believe in God. Everything we see is natural. It's probably just another natural thing, and I will conclude there. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Sweaty Yeti, sweaty Yeti, Fozzy Ozzy, Fozzy Ozzy. <laughs> yeah. just, just cause it rhymes doesn't make it funny. It's the wizard <laughs> of Oz. Uh, anyway, uh, so usually after the, um, I say this uh, every debate, but I want to make sure it's clear. Usually the, the opening statements, people are you know laying their groundwork, getting their footing, so to speak. And uh, there's really not much to, to to base off of it, other than uh, maybe sometimes you can see if somebody's uh, uh, confident or like the one debate we had. The, the guy came in, even his opening statement, you could tell had no idea what he was talking about. He <laughs> did not prepare, you know, uh, yeah, whatsoever. But uh, but I, I don't feel like that's uh, that's the case here uh, here at all. So what I will do is take take uh, a quick opportunity here before we bring him back to uh, plug it again. Uh, March 20th, we have the first Ultimate Debate Championship tournament tournament and uh we have like uh i'll do a count again tonight it's between like 550 and 600 bucks uh so 600 bones for the uh for the winner of that uh, i do have one or two spots uh for actual debaters uh, we had a couple people that uh some work stuff came up so they couldn't do it so i do have i think it's one or two spots available and i have a few spots still for judges and mods uh, if you'd like to be uh, a part of that, uh, we'd love to have your help. Uh, this can be like a, uh, the first of many that we do. So this is uh, the inaugural um, uh, uh, debate tournament, and uh, we're excited for it. But uh, the next round, uh, this is when it starts to get fun. Uh, we'll get into the cross-examination, and this is where we – now we start to hammer out the arguments. We go from, you know, kind of what we uh, put on paper and uh, to, to – to, uh, you know, have, have our starting point or beginning point, and and now we get to uh, examine and uh, and start poking holes or shooting holes in that. So, Eddie, are you ready? Yes, sir, baby. I'm ready for that one, two, bang, 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 bang. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready to see it. Let's go. Let's get it. All right, gentlemen. So uh, just so that everything's clear for uh, the debaters and for the audience during the cross examination, uh, the way that I like to handle this is. Uh, you know, the person that's doing the cross-examination sort of has control. So if they want to cut the other person off and say, that's enough, I'm moving on to my next question. That's just, I'm going to give a lot of leeway there. Um, I, I, I will, if I think things are getting off topic, you know, try to pull things back in. But, uh, you know, that, that's, that's sort of how we're doing this. So for the 10 minutes that Matt's uh, doing the cross-examination, he tees you up, you're kind of at his mercy and vice versa. So if that all makes sense, um, 10 minutes. Matt, as you start, timer will go. And you're muted, just so you're aware. 
Okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Tom, uh, if you were convinced the Bible is accurate and that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, would you become a Christian? No. Nope. If you're a burden of proof, man. Okay. Um, in a previous debate, you said the existence of theism is the result of type one and type two delusions. Is that something you still hold to? Uh, yes, but they're not called type one and type two delusions, but yes. That, that was, yeah, that was what you had said uh, in the last debate. I don't know. I type don't think you really errors. explained. It's type one and type two errors. They're not, it's not a delusion. It's just the wrong Okay. It's fine. <clears throat> okay. You start off with the foundation, I think, therefore I am, which is Rene Descartes. Um, and after Descartes took away all of his previous beliefs and, and broke down his foundation, in Meditation 3, he came to the conclusion that God must exist. Would you consider that uh, an error or a delusion? Yes. In fact, it's been a named error. It's called the Cartesian circle. It's circular reasoning, and it's literally written about in papers as the example of bad reasoning because it's a circular reasoning, the Cartesian circle. Okay. Uh, so do you think it's reasonable for you? Do you think that foundation of I think, therefore I am can be trusted if it can lead someone to circular reasoning? Oh, well, it didn't. So that wasn't based off of, I think, therefore I am. What he did was he made a mistake and he assumed that the I referred to some separate material, immaterial thing. And because he implied uh, an assumption that wasn't in the argument, it was outside of the argument. That's where the circular reasoning came from. It wasn't from the argument itself. So there's no problem with the argument. I think therefore I am is a perfect argument. Uh, Descartes' mistake was as illustrated by Bertrand Russell was that he imposed an idealistic soul thingy into the eye, which wasn't actually in the argument anywhere. Okay. And Bertrand Russell, when asked about um, Dachau, which is a concentration camp, uh, if it was wrong, he said, I think it's wrong, but I can't demonstrate it's wrong. So do you think Bertrand Russell, uh, you think that's a logical answer to that question? Well, that's always a logical answer to any question. Like I could say, I think the sun is there, but I can't demonstrate it at this exact moment. That's, it's just the most logical answer is to admit when you don't know something or you can't demonstrate something. It doesn't mean it can't be demonstrated. It just means that he in that moment was not capable of demonstrating it. So yes, that's a very reasonable answer. So it would be reasonable to answer, uh, to believe something that you can't demonstrate. Yes, it's called indirect observation. We have lots of things like we can't demonstrate the Big Bang. We can't demonstrate uh, lots of things directly, but we have indirect observation. So we say if there is some phenomenon and we expect consequences and we can predict that we will see those consequences under some test. Okay. Answers. So what about, I mean, so why wouldn't it be reasonable for a Christian to believe in God if they can't demonstrate? <clears throat> well, if they had some, I mean, why would it, why would it be unreasonable? But if you just said they don't have it, that it's reasonable to believe something without demonstration. Yes, but if you have indirect evidence, that, that counts as indirect observation counts if you don't have direct observation. Theists have neither indirect observation or direct observation. They have nothing. That's why Okay. Do you think it is reasonable for you to demand a Christian who you claim suffers from error or delusions, uh, as you said in the last debate, to demonstrate that God exists? I don't understand the question. Well, in the like, like I said, in the last debate that we were in, um, David was my partner. You did say uh, theism was the result of type one and type two delusions. Those were your exact words. Uh, and I was wondering, is it reasonable to ask a Christian to demonstrate something that you say is the result of uh, uh, someone who's suffering from type one and type two delusions? Would it be reasonable to demand that they demonstrate God exists? Again, I don't understand the question. Are you asking if someone is under delusion, does that you should? Yeah, would it would it be reason if you think someone is under delusion, would it be reasonable to think that they could give a logical argument as to why they believe? Yes, like d people under delusions can give logical arguments, and people under delusions can tell you methods that you can then verify. So, I mean. There are scientists who have delusions like uh, Oliver Sacks had lots of delusions, but he's one of the greatest neurologists that ever lives. Like just because you have a delusion doesn't mean that you are unreliable at everything. It just means that, that one thing is not reliable. Okay. So, so just so we're clear, a delusional person can be a rational person. Yes, sure. Okay. If you define atheism as you believe there is no, I think you define it as no good reason to believe in God. Um, do you believe that there is no God? 
or is it is that the position you take or do you just say there's no evidence to believe in god uh depends on the debate i can take either one i'm, I'm happy with either one well what do you tip what do you think personally what is your personal position uh, I positively think the Christian God is false. So I definitely think the Christian God doesn't exist. I can't, I don't really, I think it's more probable that there is no God at all. Okay. In some debates, you seem to argue that there's no evidence for God as you did here. But in the debate with David and I, you specifically said you're not being literal. You're just saying this uh, to open up conversation. So which is it? Is there no evidence for God or is it just a method to open up conversation? You, you you use the the example change my mind from um what's his Stephen Crowder. yeah so is there a, do you say there's no evidence for God or is that just opening up conversation well, that's the same thing so if I say there is no evidence of a God and no one can present any in any academic field then it's reasonable to conclude there is no evidence of a God so it's like if we see no unicorns and when presented with all the evidence we can find in the universe and we find no unicorns, it's reasonable to conclude there are no unicorns. So well, that, the, uh, but that would be an absolute statement with it. And if you're saying yes, in some cases there's no evidence, but then you're not literally saying that in some cases you seem to be con contradicting yourself here. I don't know what this has to do with the topic of the debate. It just seems to be stickling. On well, I was just uh, I was just wondering because that's what you had said. Yeah, no, there's the no debate. contradiction. Here. It's pretty simple. Like if there's no evidence of unicorns, it is reasonable to conclude there are no unicorns. There's no evidence of a god. It's reasonable to conclude there is no evidence of a god and no. God. Okay, so there's no evidence, but you're not saying there's literally no evidence. Same thing. So I'm saying there is literally no evidence, and the reason I'm concluding that is because no, of all the resources we have. You said uh, last time that we're right not saying, saying right now, there's, no, there's no. Okay. There's no okay. Okay. Um, let's see what other questions I've got here. Here's another about Rene Descartes. He doesn't think you need a physical body to have sensory perception. In a debate you had with Darth, Dal Darth Dawkins, you said it would be possible for you to reason without a brain. It was around the 30 minute mark. Uh, in a purely materialist materialistic world, how would that be possible? That wouldn't be possible. The reason I said that in the Darth Dawkins debate was because if it is possible to have a non-materialistic world, you can still have brains that are non-physical that can reason in a non-materialistic world. So if okay. everything's material, you couldn't have a non-material brain. That's literally a contradiction. Silly question. Okay. Uh, Sam Harris argues that if he traded Adam for Adam with a serial killer, he would be a serial killer. Uh, do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Um, if you were to trade Adam and Adam with me, would you be a Christian? Yes. Okay. Um, so you would be true to your deterministic position as a Christian and therefore as rational as you were now as an atheist. Wouldn't you agree? I don't know what that means. Like rationality. I mean, if, if you could trade Adam for Adam for me and you're saying that you would be a Christian, then you would be rational in your Christian reality, wouldn't you? <laughs> no. So rationality is a specific process of if your brain follows the evidence accordingly. And so if I was in your brain, I would be irrational to be a Christian. So, but you, you still agree that if you were in my brain, you would, uh, you would be a Christian, right? Yes. And you, you take the deterministic world, hard determinist worldview. Yep. So, uh, I don't understand how you can say one thing is rational and one thing is irrational from that position. A calculator that works would be rational because it accurately follows the rules of math to come to the correct conclusion. An irrational calculator would be one that's broken and it really leads to the incorrect conclusion. So if I change, if I'm a calculator that works and I change all of Adam Adam to a calculator that doesn't work, then I'm going to get the answers wrong. It's going to be irrational. Well, you, but you wouldn't be able to change from rationality to irrationality or vice versa based on arguments. Uh, well, so you actually would. So. Well, let me let me move on to the next question. When you start with, I think, therefore I am, did you t toss aside all of your previous beliefs and start over when you started that? Did you take the same process that Rene Descartes did? I don't even know what that means. What does this have to do? Like none of your questions are relevant to the Well, topic. if if you're saying that your atheism corresponds with reality, then I would kind of expect you, you keep talking about a methodological process. And I'm just wondering what kind of methodological process you used to determine that atheism 
is the best option? Oh, so yeah, I'm just wondering. That's, that's a question. That's a good question. So my answer okay. is, I start with, I think, therefore I am. I then go, there's some way to differentiate imagination from reality, which is science. And then we use science and apply all of our different ideas to it. And whichever ones land on the real side are the ones we have reason to believe in. Whichever ones land on the imaginary side are things we don't have reason to believe. That is the entire foundation of my atheism. The same as every scientist in every academic field, <clears throat> which is the majority of them. Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Matt and T-Jump. And uh, now we will start the 10-minute cross-examination for uh, on Matt. So T-Jump, whenever you start, they'll start the timer. Okay. You mentioned the topic is whether atheism or theism better corresponds to reality. So we need some evidence. What evidence, what is your best one example of evidence that indicates a God rather than a not God? Well, when we're talking about Christianity in general, as I, op I gave in my opening statement, I gave the historical evidence for Jesus Christ and, and what the disciples believed. And uh, I know some people do not consider that as evidence for God. But if Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, then obviously that would be evidence for God. And I do believe that he was raised from the dead based on the, that testimony. And uh Wait, so so you, you believe Jesus was raised from the dead based off of the tales in the New Testament, and that's yes. the best evidence for a God? Well, I, like I said, I have personal revelation as well, which tell, John tell 14 explains. Tell me what your explains. best evidence is. Tell me what your best evidence is. That would be the historical evidence for Jesus okay, Historical Christ evidence for my, Jesus. What yeah. did the majority of historians believe about the history of Jesus? Did he commit any miracles? Um, no, because historians would not jump to that conclusion because that would actually be a violation of just history. I mean, that would be that would be a supernatural thing. No, 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 historians no. historians no, don't deal in. That. No, that's that's completely false. So no, no, it's not. No, false. It's not. I mean, this is Mark Merman. Mark Merman. Mark Merman. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So okay, sorry. Historians uh, have the exact same standard as. Um, law legal standard which is unless it has a precedent and you can empirically demonstrate it the testimony is not sufficient to indicate unicorns or magic so any reasonable standard says testimony doesn't work for magic which is why historians <clears throat> rejects magic and miracles in the bible so as you admitted most historians think the historical testimony is garbage it doesn't account for anything correct i wouldn't say they would call it garbage they would just say they can't jump to a supernatural conclusion most historians reject the testimony as being evidence of a resurrection, correct? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I don't know what the majority is, but I do know that Bart Ehrman acknowledges that the disciples were convinced that he was. I didn't ask about Bart Ehrman. Michael Lacona, first line of his paper, Historians and Miracle Claims. Most historians and biblical scholars hold to it that the study of miracle claims less outside of the balance of sworn action of class, blah, blah, blah. Yes, Bart Ehrman said the exact same thing in his debate with Michael Lacona. So most historians rejects everything you just said. So what about the testimony? No, I would Well, I wouldn't say that. I, no, I, I, just, I just got... quoted, stop, stop, don't interrupt me. Most I just quoted two of the experts in the field who literally said word for word what I just said. So Well, I ha I have five experts here stop, that would disagree. I don't, I, don't, I don't care what your okay. opinions are. I'm just quoting what they said about the experts, the majority of experts in the field. You don't get an opinion on it. You don't get anecdotal quotes against that. I I just win. Next. Um you, so what about the testimony of <coughs> Jesus do you think qualifies as evidence that we should believe he rose from the dead? What, what about that story? What about the testimony? I think you could add the whole gospel account and the uh, establishment of the church in the first century on the claim that Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead, particularly the creed that's dated back to the within five years of the claim that Jesus Christ uh, rose from the dead. Then you can kind of look at the actions of the disciples and historical figures what, what afterwards. Do you, anything, the actions, what do the actions matter at all? Like the actions don't tell. Well, us about I mean, them. if you're, if according to scripture, you first believe that you don't understand what Jesus is saying as a disciple and you actually flee and deny Jesus Christ, but then later on, you're being willing to be crucified or persecuted and crucified yourself because of that belief, then you have to be able to explain why people suddenly done such a, a 180 and went one way to the other one way i have no of, idea what you're saying so of what, running... about, what about what about them sacrificing life has anything to do with the truth of their claim it, it's there's no relevance to someone sacrificing their life well, what to you, what they're claiming I mean, being true right like someone can say I... wait, wait 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 so someone can say i believe there are ufos and 
I don't care if you disagree with me. You could kill me. I'm still going to say there's UFOs. Does that make UFOs more likely to be true than someone who says, I'd rather not die. I'm going to say UFOs didn't happen. Does that does, Do either of those claims add any or take any precedent away from the, the UFO actually being there? Any, yes. How? Because if someone were to say I was abducted by an, an alien and maybe this alien gave them some sort of information as far as how to conduct their life and this alien promised to save them or something and they were thinking, okay, well, I'm willing to die for this and willing to even be mocked and ridiculed, then that would definitely say something about what they believe they experienced. Yeah, but why does that, what does, what do they believe have anything to do with the truth of the thing? Like, does, is the truth of the UFO more likely to be true because a person was willing to die for it? Or is yes, the truth I think UFO? so. What? I, th I think if some, no, I think so, if, so if millions of people in Bud and Buddhist temples are willing to set themselves on fire for the Buddhist tradition, which is significantly more than the Christian tradition, by your standard, does that mean that they have more evidence than Christianity because more of them are willing to light themselves on fire for their it's, position? It's ev evidence that they genuinely believe that what they what they are experiencing corresponds with their reality. Yeah, I didn't ask about what they believe. I don't care what they believe. I care about does you're, what they believe correspond to reality. You're, so saying, you're asking, wait, 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 wait. So saying that, oh, it's evidence they believe. Like, I don't care if they believe. I asked you for evidence that it's true, not evidence that they believed it was true. So what evidence is there that it's true? Not evidence that they believed it's true. I don't care what they believe. I want to know what evidence you have that it's true. Well, I gave some earlier, the like empty what? tomb, the empty tomb, the conversion of Paul, the conversion of James. Okay, it's one at a time. Um, so empty tomb. Empty tomb is better yeah. explained by thieves who stole the body. Why would that be better well, explained that's what, by the resurrection? And that's literally explained by Matthew in, in uh, the Why Gospel of Why would that be Matthew. better explained by resurrection? Because you have the, the disciples, as I said, who fleed. You have Roman soldiers put in guard. So how would a bunch of ragtag disciples overpower Roman guards and steal the body of Jesus? And for what purpose? That would uh, be. <clears throat> Romans didn't place guards on tombs. Romans didn't do that. So it's most likely he was thrown in an empty grave. It didn't even happen. But it's well, we're still we're, yeah. so, so wait, wait. So still a bunch of thieves killed two Roman guards, moved a rock and stole a body is still infinitely many times a better explanation than magical risen from dead zombie Jesus. That That's still more ridiculous than a bunch of people overpower two guards to move a rock and steal a body. That's that's a far simpler explanation. How, how do you possibly conclude in what world is it simpler to say the body magically rose from the dead than to say 50 people came and just killed the two Roman guards and took the body? Like, how? Well, uh, first of all, it, when it so talks about a guard, it's not just specifically two Roman guards. Uh, and the Hebrews were given uh, um, ability to go guard and seal the tomb. So it wasn't like... That wasn't the, the question. Uh, so few... I don't care. Let, let's say you have 50 guards. You got 50 Roman elite guards and you have 500 crazy leave Jewish people and they kill the guards, the 50 guards and take the body. That's still infinitely more reasonable than magical zombie Jew risen from dead. How do you conclude that risen from dead here is a better explanation? Well, I wouldn't agree with your premise that you had 500 people who wanted to go overthrow the guards. Scripture doesn't talk that's, about that's not that. The point. That's not the point. So, well, you're, you're, oh. it is if you're going to make up stuff, you can't just make up stuff about what the gospel says. No, no, no. The, the question here is which is more reasonable yeah. to believe? Something that we know is possible, that is physically possible and happens in the world every all the time. A group of people uh, hurt another group of people and take their stuff. Or Steal their bodies and pretend they raised from the dead. So, so again, the question here is just is not about specifically about anything like, well, what exactly happened in the history? I don't care. I want to know... In your brain, can you figure out that saying a bunch of people took something from other people is very easy, very simple, very reasonable, and more reasonable than magical dead body rose from the dead? Like, like if we just said Santi Sai Baba's body disappeared from its grave, it had guards, would you believe it rose from the dead? Or would you believe a bunch of his followers probably took it? Which one of those is the more reasonable explanation? Well, under the context of history, uh, I would say the more reasonable explanation was Jesus rose from the dead. How? How is how? 
Well, that would be that would be quite a bit to get into. And I don't know that I can answer that in just 50 yeah, seconds. You just have to give but... one thing. Like the whole point here is for you to give one piece of evidence. Okay, I, I, already gave, zero. I already gave one explanation. We... You put a, a group of guards in front of a sealed tomb and you have, according to scripture, the disciples that fleed and ran from Jesus. There would be no reason for them to all yeah, of a sudden and you're say, saying you know what? You feel that that's less reasonable than magical Jew rose from dead. Like that shows how weak your position. No, I'm is. I'm saying that that is more reasonable than to say they uh, a group of these people just decided, hey, we're going to overpower a bunch of Roman guards and pretend Jesus rose from the dead, and then face death and persecution the rest of their life for that. That that doesn't even make sense. Magical risen from dead is more reasonable than human psychology. Yes, I'll conclude there. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Whoa, got a little spicy. Got a little spicy. Who, yeah. who, brought, who, brought, gotcha. hey, who, who brought who brought the Tabasco? Yeah, that's I got sure you sure, sure <laughs> can't say that. Yeah. Southern rednecks, man. There's certain words that we have troubles with, trouble with, and that's one of them. Seems there's like a lot of those in your your personal little dictionary there, Sweaty Eddie. Yeah, I think I need to slow down on the beer, maybe. Anyway, so they, they told me you wanted to come on here tonight in, uh, in between rounds uh, freestyle. So uh, I had a beat ready for you. So here you go. I don't I can't swear oh, that, I thought you were thought going to freestyle. No, man, I don't freestyle. I'm not what a rapper. What the fuck was that? I'm, see, you have writers and you have rappers. I'm a writer. That's that's what I do. I can I can I can write some mean bars, but when they come out, they come out like lines, not bars. So it's kind of like you know you're looking for the bars. I, 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 I was talking about hip hop. All of a sudden, you're talking about cocaine bars and lines. Oh, I was talking about get rail. out of here, man. Oh, get, get out of here. Uh, so anyway, back back to the debate, Eddie. God, you you just messed all that up. Uh, so, what are your thoughts uh, after the cross examinations? I don't know, man. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, you know, Tom. I don't is, know, man. Well, Tom is very polished, very experienced, very quick, very witty. He thinks very fast. Um, so if I had to give an edge to anybody right now, it would be Tom. He just, um, although I don't agree with a lot of his stuff, but he's still, you know, uh, he is a very fast thinker. You know, he's he's a good orator. Hallelujah. Absolutely. That's the, that's Absolutely. the word of the day, baby. Orator. Hallelujah. Um, yes. So what, what I'm now going into the, the open conversation, what I'm looking for is, which one corresponds with reality? So we've got through, hopefully got through some of the rhetoric. Yeah. Uh, and now we can get to uh, the actual topic on hand, which is uh, which best corresponds with reality. And at the end of the day, Eddie, as you know, here at the atheist round table, that's how we, that's how we judge our debates. It's, that's right. uh, we, we, can, we can completely disagree with you, but did you stay on topic and did you deliver points to the topic Absolutely. and hammer that home? So right. um, I mean, we all know that, that theism answers the questions better. So it's just, but tonight it's about style, you know. <laughs> you know what is he talking about? I hate that you beat me to the sound effects. Oh because my God. I started, I, I downloaded the whole audio panel and everything to connect to my show for sound effects. I can't figure it out. I'm just <laughs> all over the place. It came with three different pieces of software, and I'm like, so. All right, well, let's uh, let's get back into this. So uh, next is 40 minutes, open uh, open discussion. Uh, we'll bring him back on, and uh, Dr. Josh, um, he'll, uh, he'll get him rocking and rolling. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get it on. All right, so before we jump into the open discussion, um, I this is maybe more for my clarity than anybody else's. Uh, but Tom, would you do me a favor? 
and uh, as we as we do here, there's some just mic noise, like bristling. Yeah, yeah, I think that's Matt. I think it might be just yeah. Um, would you just start with the sentence? What I hear you saying is with relation, you know, with respect to uh, his his argument for uh, how Christianity best corresponds to reality. And just say what I hear you saying is, and then tell him what his argument is, so that we can all get on the same page here. Uh, well, what I hear him saying is, is that Jesus rose from the dead and that it's better explained by a magical risen from the dead zombie Jew than uh, any natural explanation. Like a bunch of people just took the body from the grave because two Roman guards and a tomb are somehow impregnable from the entire like amount of all human explanation. No one could have ever broken that into that tomb and stolen that body. The only possible explanation is Jesus rose from the dead. That's the most reasonable thing to infer there. Uh, I think that's that's pretty much the argument from the cross-examination that he presented. Okay, Matt, do you think that fairly represents what you're saying? If not, why not? Well, I think that probably fairly represents what I was saying based on his questions. That doesn't really fairly represent the argument that I'm specifically making, because I don't think if we're going to debate which best corresponds with reality, I don't think we necessarily have to actually get into whether Jesus is the son of God, although I believe he is, but whether these people thought he was the son of God and that this movement that transformed the West, uh, the impact it had and how it corresponds with our reality today. So I, I don't, I don't even think we necessarily have to get into did Jesus is Jesus, the son of God, as obviously I believe, but it's what these disciples and what the early church thought and what they were willing to go through to push this, uh, this new religion. Okay. Well, so help well, I me. did ask him for the best evidence he had at the beginning, right? All right. Well, hey, let, let me help me out here, Matt, um, uh, because I do want us to get on the same page here. So if in, in two sentences, if you can, how does how does Christianity best um, correspond with reality better than atheism, for example? Well, uh, Christianity is and the Judeo Christian heritage and tradition is what our Western culture that we all benefit from uh, is built upon, even the sciences and the philosophies and things like that. So as I pointed out earlier, Jordan Peterson said, we're saturated with the Judeo-Christian uh, tradition. So in that sense, everything we do in our daily lives is somehow connected to that. Even the laws that we have written on the books uh, are highly influenced by what scripture has to say. Okay. Not, all, not all of it, but, but a lot of it. Okay, so Tom, do do it again for me, uh, if you would. What I hear you saying is... So, so what I hear him saying now is that uh, the fact that there is a profound impact by Christian culture on today's society indicates that Christianity is most likely true, I think. Matt, is that what you're saying? Well, I believe it's true, but no, I believe it because it best conforms with reality, as what the topic of the debate is. Wait, uh, as opposed to atheism. So so the question was, is why does Christianity correspond to reality? And you said, because it's had a profound impact on society, right? Yes. So so that's it's, your evidence. Your evidence? Yeah, it's, it says uh, which best corresponds with reality, Christianity or atheism. Right. I'm right. arguing that athe Christianity best corresponds because of the historical impact of the Judeo-Christian heritage. <clears throat> okay, so... Just before, because I'm, I'm going to turn it loose now. It, Tom, do you feel like you understand his argument? Yeah. Okay. Matt, do you feel like he understands your argument? Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I guess we'll find out when, we, when okay. we start talking. Well, let's roll with it. Okay. So, like, I, I think atheism best corresponds to reality because all of the models don't include a God. They all say <clears> something <throat> like there's physical stuff and it predicts what we see, like, all of the different features in physics, uh, like answers to the predicted spatial curvature, the amplitude of the density perturbations, the do, do the de perturbations depend on scale, the gravitational wave perturbations, what solves the monopole problem? Like these are questions that are in physics that physics solves, and they don't have anything to do with the God. That's the physical solutions 
to all of the questions of reality is why I think atheism is true. And your best evidence for God, for Christianity is it affected people in the past, which is a genetic fallacy. Your, your, your best argument is a genetic fallacy that says, well, oh, it affects people today as well, not just the past today still. Well, I mean, atheism more affects people today because it's the predominant feature in every scientific field. But if we just, okay, like, okay. Cumulate, just, just for, just for clarification here, when you say atheism, are you saying that these scientists and these philosophers are majority? All atheists, you, yes. Yeah, are majority atheists. Yes. But are they yes, using their are, yes. are they using their atheism uh, to work out these problems in yes. science or to work at? So they're they're appealing to their own atheism to work out these yes, problems. Yes, they're majority atheists. But again, so your your entire basis <clears throat> is a genetic fallacy. They they had this belief and they did good things. Therefore, their belief is correct. So so like. If, if well, the majority I, I, yeah. of, was more majority Muslim, then that's evidence that a Muhammad was correct because yeah, they I, had the I, most I, profound impact on society. Or back in I the evidence of the Romans, was it that evidence that the Roman gods were true because they had the most profound impact on society? Like, I don't think you're still understanding my argument. I'm saying this isn't necessarily based on them being true or not. It's simply based on the impact of their beliefs that has had on society. Yeah, so I'm asking, how does the impact their beliefs have had on society have anything to do with whether Christianity corresponds to reality? Well, I mean, look at our scientific enterprise, our everything we do today, our laws, our judicial system. I mean, yeah. all of that is based off the Judeo-Christian foundation. For, yes. for the most wait, part, wait, wait, I'm not wait. saying all of it is, but, but there's, that doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. Influenced. None of it matters. It doesn't matter what why, it's based Why would on. that not so, matter, though? So, I don't understand why that would not matter. We are based on chimpanzees. Does that mean chimpanzees are the superior race? Do they have more intelligence? Do they have, have better grasp of reality than we do because our species evolved from the chimpanzees? Well, no. Like, where we came from doesn't matter. Like, someone could have created Hitler. Hitler designed nuclear power nuclear bombs does that mean that nuclear bombs are inherently evil no we can use them to make power generators the fact that hitler designed them doesn't mean that that his ideas or beliefs are responsible or that are have anything to do with the use or purpose or value or truth of nuclear weapons the origin of the thing has nothing to do with what it is or, or whether it's true it's literally a genetic fallacy like someone okay. could have made a hammer the first hammer could have been invented to like break rocks now we use hammers to build houses the reason it was originally made what originally inspired scientists has nothing to do with the truth of whether or not well, well let me let me not. ask a question just for clarification here um if i'm going out into the world into reality and i'm looking at some of the technology that science has developed and some of the philosophies, which, you know, I'm not a philosopher like you are. I know you value philosophy highly, but what would I observe in my reality that would make me attribute that to atheism? Well, you don't need to attribute it to anything. Like that's an appeal to consequence fallacy. It doesn't matter what you attribute it to. What but isn't is that, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking in this debate, we, we're pointing to certain things that we can demonstrate in reality that, Christianity has had an impact on or atheism. So I'm wondering what can I look at that atheism has had an impact on? No, no. So, so the impact, the consequences of a belief have nothing to do with truth. This is called an appeal to consequences fallacy saying that, Oh, this person believed X and they did good. Doesn't mean that their belief is more likely true and saying that this person believed X and they did bad. Doesn't mean their belief is less likely to be true. The truth of a claim is completely independent of what the person who believes it does. This is super basic logic. Like, doesn't matter if all of history was based on a god or not. That has zero evidence to whether or not the god actually exists. It's just a genetic fallacy, and, an, and a, like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, you're saying that oh, this well, person yeah, is more I... successful, therefore their beliefs are more likely true. No, it's like the pr prosperity. No, doctor. that's that's not the argument I'm specifically making. I'm just we're talking about what best corresponds with reality. Yeah. So, so how is that not and, the argument? And making? that's why that's why I'm saying, if atheism best corresponds with reality, I should be able to observe things in my reality that points to atheism. What would that be? Physics. We can look at physics, physics. every scientific field that comes to a conclusion, like all of those things I listed. The uh, just going through the cosmological 
questions about the universe, like what is the temperature of reheating? What causes the matter and antimatter asymmetry? What are the primordial black holes? Are there? But that doesn't these, that doesn't these lead me to atheism. Physics. That yes, doesn't does. lead me to atheism, though. It doesn't yes, to me it does. because so you're you're because question, I'm still trying to figure out what you're what you're saying because you still seem to be saying that the fact that most people in the past were Christians and they were successful in society and had an impact, they were saying yes. true. Well, I mean, let's, let's take it from your perspective that, I mean, what we benefit from today, as I, I, you know, like I said earlier, would you disagree with Jordan Peterson when he says we're saturated with Judeo Christian what ethics does that have today? to do with the topic? Well, I mean, these people who, were what apparently does, what does wrong. That have to do with the topic, was I mean, able to transform book. some right, Tom, society. Tom, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explain it. Go ahead. They were these people that you say are, and, and you've you haven't used delusional, but you've used error and error that were wrong. Um, they basically transform the Western civilization like we've never seen. What so, does that have to do with the topic? Well, I'm I'm saying we can observe that. We can observe their contributions contributions to society in reality what can i observe in with atheism what, in their reality? contributions aren't evidence how how do you how do well you i consider it evidence people? how that's the question how do you consider that evidence okay um what's our what's the title of our debate again yeah let's 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 pause for a second because i, I i'm i'm confused too so okay um Tom, what did you understand the topic of this debate to be? What is it that you're trying to prove or uh, to demonstrate? Whether atheism or theism best corresponds to reality, meaning like which one actually exists. Is there a God that exists in reality or is there no God that exists in reality? Okay. okay. And so, yeah. Matt, is that – go ahead. What did, you, what did you anticipate the debate was? Well, I'm reading the title there, which best corresponds with reality, Christianity or atheism. I think Tom <coughs> may have uh, misunderstood and, and went with theism versus atheism, but it was Christianity versus atheism. I don't know if that okay, was a okay, misunderstanding so, so, so on your let, part. Let, me, or let what? me say it again. So the question is, is, is there a Christian God who exists and does that correspond to reality? Or is there no Christian God who exists and does that correspond to reality? Those are the questions, right? Which, which Is there a Christian God who exists or is there no God who exists? Which one of those statements most corresponds to reality? That's that's the topic, correct? Uh, well, we can go that route. That's not specifically the topic. Because when you're talking about Christianity and atheism, we're saying atheism, a lack of belief in God or gods. And that's pretty much the definition of atheism. When we're talking about Christianity, we're talking about a follower of Jesus Christ, one who has believes Jesus Christ is their savior. And what has that belief done to our reality? That's how that's the way I'm taking it. So we can go down the other route if you want, but Okay, so uh, I think I, we've I think we've I think we've you know sort of come to the conclusion that there was a there was a fundamental misunderstanding here uh on one side or the other about what this topic is. So I the way that I'm understanding this is like it, I, the question that I want to ask is guys, how do you define reality? Right? Because then the question is if once you define reality, all right, so the the theories or the ideas behind atheism and the theories or ideas, beliefs about Christianity, which one accounts for that reality better? Is that yes? Yeah, that's a pretty good way of looking at it. I didn't. Understand I think that. yeah. So reality oh. is that which exists. Right. Exactly. So my so that's how we would define it. So then, which one accounts for that reality better? Yes. Sure. Am yeah. I missing it? I think that. Um, how would you word it? Well, I mean. So, so when we're saying what accounts for reality or what corresponds to reality, we're saying what accurately describes all the facts about reality. So it was like yes. physics does physics really well. Um, but I don't see how this, how his interpretation has anything to do with the topic. So he's saying that people believed in Christianity. They did good things. Like, okay. So, I mean, that would be the topic. If, if we were discussing like which had more of an impact on history on science over time, then we could say, yes, Christianity had more of an impact over on science over time. Just like, in India, Hinduism had more impact on science over time in that country. So, but I don't, I don't, what does this have to do with reality? Like saying literally that lots of people believed in the past, like most Christians invented cow herding because they were the ones alive during the time, or most Christians did, uh, what's it, chicken farms. They invented chicken farming. Does that have anything to do with the truth of reality? No, I don't. Well, I don't uh, just just to clarify, you were bringing up earlier physics, and most people were atheists in physics yes. and scientists. 
yes. kind of attributing that to atheism in reality today. So you're basically doing the same thing I was no. doing earlier. No, I'm just saying that the theories yes. don't. In, I mean, that's how I took it anyway. Then you <clears throat> interpreted it incorrectly. The reason I'm referencing the consensus of experts is because the theories that best explain <clears throat> reality, that best correspond to reality, have nothing to do with a god. That's, okay. that's the evidence there. Just, just to clear up my position on the consensus of experts, I, I know that you use that a lot. Um, as a Christian, uh, I don't necessarily go with the consensus of experts. I mean, the, the uh, one of the underlying teachings of Christianity is the consensus of experts can be wrong. I mean, it was the consensus of religious scholars and experts okay, that, that's, that put we, we, Jesus to death. Focus so, on the topic. So, focus on the topic. Okay, so, I'm just just clarifying that uh, just for you because that's not really yes, something you, that you I reject the consensus of experts in every academic field. I don't okay. reject so, it. I just it's just not my final authority, so to speak. That's fine. So so okay. again, why do you keep saying that? Most most Christians in the past who invented science were were or most people who in, in the past who invented science were Christians. Like what what do you think that tells us about the world? Well, I think I don't know if I would say most of them were scientists. I think Christianity had a huge impact on science. What, and what, what it tells the, us of it tells us about the world was that they believed that there was some sort of consistency in the world in which they could use this scientific method to test this consistency. And I believe they understood that this consistency came from the existence, their belief in the existence of okay, God. I don't, I don't care about their belief. Tell us something, what it tells us about the world, not their beliefs. I don't want to know what this tells us about their beliefs. I want to know what this tells us about reality. Well, it tells me that Christianity uh, saturates reality. The, the belief mean, in Christianity saturates reality? The belief in, yeah, the belief in God and through Jesus Christ, his son. So, so I mean, but the, uh, but the belief has nothing to do with the truth. Like everyone could believe and still be wrong, right? Yeah, I mean, have you heard? You, I'm sure you've heard. It, it used to be very common. I don't know if it's so common today. But it says, "You will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free." So, that was so one of everyone, the. Everyone can believe and be wrong, correct? Yes. Okay. So you you can have beliefs the, that are wrong. So so why does the fact that lots of people in the past believed in Christianity? <sighs> have anything to do with whether Christianity, like the actual Christian God exists in reality? Or, or do you admit these are two separate things? Um, ask that question again. I'm not sure if I follow. Does the number of people who believe in the Christian God and had an impact in society, that is a different question than whether or not the Christian God exists. So, yes, so correct. everyone could yeah. believe and they could all be wrong and the Christian God doesn't exist, correct? Correct, yeah. So when we're asking which corresponds to reality, we're not asking which people has the most beliefs we're asking does the christian god exist because if it doesn't atheism corresponds to reality yeah if the christian god doesn't exist then atheism would correspond with reality right, right. so so you I need agree. to show that there's some reason to believe the christian god exists correct well i mean like i said this wasn't uh, i don't think this is a debate on the existence of god i mean that wasn't how how i I framed the debate how I came into it. Okay, okay. What, so, do, you, what do you think the debate is about? It's which best corresponds with what, what reality, atheism or Christianity. What does that mean to it you? It means that if I'm living my daily life, going about my daily business, doing everything I say, then I expect to see certain things in reality that would more correspond with one over the you other. use correspond mm. in the definition of correspond. So... Do you mean by which better corresponds to reality, which more people believe? Uh, well, I mean, you could go that route. I mean, if we're going with I'm consensus, asking what you believe more, what, what you mean by this term? No, that wasn't that wasn't what I was going with. Okay, I was going with I was going simply with the influences of the Judeo Christian. I, I want to know what tradition. you mean by the phrase. I don't see how that's so complicated. I mean, I think Josh kind of, he kind of understood it earlier. I didn't know what Josh said. So let me, and so let's, let let me, let me see if I can ask a question that will maybe clarify again, at least for me. So before, let's, let's go back to like a thousand BCE, right? So before Christianity, before, um, you know, there's, there's, there's really any serious influence that anything to do with Christianity at all. Um, you know, Mesopotamian religion was the predominant thing in the ancient Near East, right? Or at least in Mesopotamia. So would you say that like Enlil and An, um, 
then these these other Mesopotamian deities that Mesopotamian religion would have corresponded to reality. Matt, yes, I would I would say that their beliefs in these multiple gods and the influence it had on their culture corresponded with their reality. And I'm not saying if that's true or not. Now, in the biblical narrative, it's open about all of these multiple gods in ancient Mesopotamia and stuff. And that's why God called Abraham out of there, away from those other gods. So, yeah, I would say that that corresponded with their reality. And so then 50,000 the years ago, 50,000 years ago, when they were predominantly near Neanderthals, did atheism best correspond to reality because there were no religions? Well, I mean, from what I'm told that... Uh, that uh, when people didn't understand anything, they filled God in with the gap. So absolutely not. Atheism wouldn't no, correspond with anything. So dogs don't believe in God. So back before we had these religious ideas. When Wait, we did you say dogs, dogs don't believe in God? Yes. So, dogs? so I'm saying prior to humans. Dogs are atheists. Pri prior okay. to humans, back when we were apes, ton tens of thousands of years ago, was atheism what best corresponded to reality? Well, I, I I don't think that we would want to go down the evolutionary route because I don't accept evolution in that. Hypothetically. hypothetically, hypothetically, no, I would not say that. Well, if you just define what's best corresponds to reality as me looking around my world and seeing what beliefs most people have, and back then most people had the belief of not God, then that's well, how do to... how do you know they had the belief not gods? I mean, it based based on our hypothetical based on the earliest doesn't matter. Well, you know, a hypothetically, I mean, if it's an incorrect hypothetical, why should I entertain it? Because this is just a testing your definition. So testing your definition. Okay. So Most hypothetically, people fifty thousand okay. years ago did not believe in a god. So by your definition, fifty thousand years ago, atheism better corresponded to reality. Um. I mean, I, I, it depends on what you're, how you're defining atheism, but I suppose if you're going to say atheism is simply a lack of belief in God, then okay. yes, that would be okay, okay. correct. How about, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Gotta, how about, in, how about in, yeah. hang on. In, in 500 years, in 500 years, um, Islam okay, has... No, Josh, I want to go in order. We'll go in order in this one. So, so 6,000 years ago, the majority of people were Hindus. Did Hindu, was Hinduism the most uh, correspondent to reality? Mm -hmm. 6,000 years ago. Yes, you remember when I was, well, you're saying Hindu. You're saying Hindu, but hold on. I mean, you rem do you remember my opening argument? Uh, uh, nope. Yeah, uh, I, so I, 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 I specifically like three questions. mentioned. Three, three questions. So, well, this so. isn't a question and answer, so it's a discussion. So I specifically mentioned theism, deism, and pantheism, uh, which is kind of included in all of that. So, so in which, which, which would correspond with their reality, what they were thinking, but it also corresponds with what scripture says that God has put eternity in man's heart so that man is without excuse. So not only does it correspond with rea their reality, it actually corresponds with what scripture was saying as well. So it, in the end, that still doesn't hurt my argument. That actually supports my argument. But oh, I think when you're, you've completely sabotaged your own argument here. So in well, no, hold on. years... Uh, in Hold 500 on, just, years, just for... if most people are atheists, does atheists most correspond to reality? Atheism. Well, you're asking me another hypothetical question. It's again. pretty simple. Thought experiments are how yeah. science is done. It's okay, so hard. so based on that argument, the answer would be yes. So so what most corresponds so, to reality? Wait, wait, wait. So, so, so main, main, main question here. Main, main question here. So what corresponds okay. to reality by your definition is what most people believe? Well, it's, it's also the influence. I don't just go with what people believe. Well, I don't I, know what I, kind of influence atheism. Now, I will say that atheism corresponded pretty well with the reality of, of, uh, of um, communist Russia and, and the gulags and stuff. I think that you could argue that, but then they realized this isn't right, uh, and they corrected okay. that. So but I'm going to... Can, hold, I, can hold, I finish hold. just one little thought right quick? Well, I was wanting... Uh, I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. But I, I'm, uh, I'm going to steer this a different direction. But go ahead. Go ahead, man. Okay. What Tom Jump actually said when he asked that question, he actually, if he's, I don't know his position here, but based on his argument, then I would be correct in the current situation in which more people were Christians. Christianity has influenced the world more. So at this current moment in the history we are, Christianity better conforms with reality than atheism. And that's all I had to say. 
Okay. So, I mean, I guess I'm looking at the, the and we can go either direction. Like I'm fine, whatever direction you guys want to go, if, whatever you agree on. I, I guess my understanding of reality was a little more broad than that. And it wasn't simply what people believe or what the majority of people experience, but you know, like, and that, well, that wasn't what I was arguing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is what it, it is, what it seems like <laughs> the argument has sort of gone into. So um, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so maybe if we could, Tom, th maybe this would be a way to do this. State your position again, and maybe like your your main proof about or your main evidence for why you think atheism corresponds, and then maybe that'll set the the tone a little bit or the direction. And let's see if that let's see if that works. Sure. So so when I ask the question, does something correspond to reality? Uh, correspond is when something is a sentence like the sky is blue and that accurately describes reality. Not, not our reality, not our perceived reality, not the things in our subjective minds, but the objective reality independent of any human opinion. So if I want to know if something corresponds to reality, I want to know, does it exist if no, hu no humans ever existed? Uh, so like the sun would exist if no humans ever existed. It, it exists in reality. It corresponds to reality. Uh, if something is a subjective opinion of a person, it does not correspond to reality. It corresponds to their imagination. So my argument was that when we're discussing what corresponds to reality, independent of human imagination, we need some kind of method to differentiate imagination from reality, which is what we call evidence, which is science and science. When we're talking about the things that exist independent of imagination, like all of those questions in physics I listed, are best explained by a non-God hypothesis, by atheistic hypotheses of what's ultimate and necessary and existing eternally. Those are all non-God things that are answer those questions best. So all of the things that answer the real evidence independent of human imagination is non-God answers. Um, oh, okay, I, we could go with that. I, I mean, I, I could, Oh, I love, uh, I love your topic. I, I want to go with just your topic because I think it is <laughs> glorious. Okay, so... So you said the best, what best corresponds with reality. Um, and in the past, you had mentioned something about praying for a golden brick uh, and the, the golden brick showing up or something. Uh, so let's imagine you brought up the Hindu God earlier. I don't remember what the Hindu God for uh, possessions is, but let's imagine you were a, a Hindu is trying to demonstrate that this Hindu God exists and y'all come up with some sort of, um, process, maybe uh, a building that was um, secured with a camera, and you told this Hindu, hey, pray that a golden brick appears inside here, and the camera's watching it. So this Hindu prays, and this golden brick appears. Um, a how method. would you, what would you, what would you conclude there? That's a terrible method. I'd say you'd have to appear in like here in a novel testable space that's repeatable. Like I'd come up okay. with an actual method. So yeah, if we had an actual method, like if I pray to God and a gold brick appears in front of me every time I pray to a God, that's good evidence of a God. Sure. Okay. So would you conclude, let's say if that happened 20, 30 times, uh, sure. like a, you know, ultimate or five over times and is over. Good. Five times okay. I believe in a God. So you would, you would believe, you would conclude at that point that this Hindu God of possessions exists. Well, I'd count it as evidence. So I definitely say that's evidence to towards the conclusion okay. that God exists. I don't know if that would be sufficient to prove it exists, but I mm -hmm. would, it's definitely evidence. But would you be using science to do that? Yes, that's the novel testable predictions. To, just, to say that this is evidence for God. What? But, I mean, because science, from my understanding, is basically demonstrating what the physical world, you know, we test the, the physical world and we come to these conclusions on the physical world, but Science isn't going to deposit, oh, this is evidence for God. Science nope. would just say, well, this thing is shown up. We can't under, we can't explain it. And mm -hmm. therefore nope. we don't know the answer yet. You're saying science wouldn't do that. No, science works very simply. It's novel testable prediction. So if you have a hypothesis, you say there's a God and you say, if I pray to a God and a God appears or a gold brick appears, science would conclude that's evidence of a God. So science would conclude the same thing about ghosts or goblins so you, or magic. Like the, you think the science for these things all the time. Like there are you think the scientists papers would, for non-physical things. These so exist. you think the scientists would conclude because this, this because this brick appeared over and over and over again. This is evidence for the Hindu yes, God. They would write that in. A, they would write that in a paper. Yeah, that's well, then literally. they would be a, they would be abandoning science at that point and going no. into theology or theism, wouldn't they? No, they wouldn't. That's still science. Science is just novel testable predictions. They don't care what it's for. So if you do novel testable I've, predictions for ghosts, those are published in papers. 
for spirits, published in papers, after their laughter life, published in papers. There are papers for parapsychology all the time. Science does not care what you say exists. They just want novel testable predictions to show it does. No, well, one, see, cares. I, no one in science says it has to be physical. No one cares. I, I would call that betraying science at that point. No, the science at best could say, we don't know. We know this happened. Whether this means this God exists or not, we don't know. And then once you conclude it was this God, then you've actually stepped outside the realm of science into the theology, theology or something else, and you've abandoned science at that point. And that's no, my point. That's just misunderstood. Well, that, that's how I understand science. Okay, I did not know science. that science would jump to a super um, supernatural conclusion when they're limited. When science is limited to the natural science world, science isn't limited at all. Like you're limited by your prediction. So you make the prediction. Science accepts whatever you can prove. Like no one cares. No one in science says it's impossible to conclude they're supernatural. They just said there's no evidence for it. We test for supernatural yeah, I, all the time. There are parapsychology journals where people do this and say, there's a ghost. Here's a prediction. Let's try to confirm it. No one in well, science cares that no one says you can't support the supernatural. That's not a thing in science. It's just a misunderstanding by creationists. There's a Berkeley article. Uh, I don't that, care. I, from I care UC Berkeley who says that science cannot demonstrate or conclude the supernatural. But you're saying they can't. I just told you. Well, this, is, this is Berkeley. I mean, you see Berkeley. That's an so anecdote. I, I don't care what I you don't think Every I science, don't... science all agrees with what I just said. Here. Yes, make testable predictions. Literally, there are hundreds of published, peer-reviewed parapsychology papers doing exactly this. So he's an idiot because there are literally papers that do exactly this trying to show the, the supernatural. This is not okay, well, I, I think I think we'll have to just disagree on that because you I never understand. I can give you the I journal. never well, I can give you this site too that would say otherwise. I don't care about the site. There so, are literally uh, scientific published well, papers. Okay. I mean scientific published papers means nothing to me, as I said. I mean yeah. peer reviewed papers, I mean that that's yes. that's not even um that's uh, actually I have a Vox, actually a December twenty fifteen Vox article basically said let's stop pretending that the peer review process even works and they and scientists did test on previously peer-reviewed papers wait, wait, and found wait, that, wait, that wait, 90% stop, stop, stop. of them could not be duplicated. Was, stop, stop, stop. Your question was, if we do these testable predictions, would scientists conclude there is a God? The answer is yes. We know this because okay. there are published papers uh, who make the conclusion here is a ghost or here is a spirit based on these testable predictions. That is literally oh, okay. a thing in science. So you're saying that science has demonstrated supernatural before? No, those are the conclusions based on the hypotheses. So it is a conclusion. They would conclude this if you got top okay. positive results. Okay. They did not get positive results. Therefore, they did not conclude that. So that, that okay. was, that's how science works. Okay. Well, I, I guess uh, I, you know, that's something I did not know because I did not know science would deposit a supernatural explanation for something that they couldn't answer. Yeah, there's, but, there's dozens of studies on prayer studies too to say that if prayer worked, they conclude a god. Like if you could pray and hear, hear yeah, someone's arms, that I, you're I know there's, a god. I know yes, that there's scientific all the time. Well, I know that there's scientific studies that say prayer is beneficial. But they didn't conclude that God God exists in that. Well, no, they they but, all like exception of two. They all conclude it's non bishop beneficial, and one actually concluded it's negatively beneficial. So it has the opposite effect. All of the studies show it doesn't work, but they would conclude a God if it. No, there's work. there's that's a different debate topic. But there are studies that show that it was yeah, very it's, it's a different very debate topic. Beneficial. You can find a list of them all on Wikipedia. The miracle prayer studies they don't work. Yeah, I actually but, I actually but, debated but that, that topic the on the, the point is that issue. Science is happy to admit a God and supernatural. No one says it can't okay. be. Okay, well, here's another problem. Uh, once you get you to this point, the first problem yet. You just presented well, misunderstanding. So what's the you first said, problem? You said that anything could be deposited that can be deposited by a supernatural explanation. You could deposit as a natural explanation. Yes, it's called post hoc so, reasoning. Yeah, so so if you got all of this evidence through through this this brick that suddenly appeared, uh, why would you not just uh, uh, use a natural explanation for it? Because it's post hoc. In science, there's this thing called post hoc rationalization. Uh, it's where you take all the evidence you see and you explain it away as a different hypothesis. That's always less supported than the one that predicted it before we knew. It's called under. So you would? Are you saying that you're doing the post hoc? I'm not. Sh so so. I don't understand. I'm not in sure. In science, what you're first you say I have a theory, and then you make <sighs> predictions, and then if you get the predictions yes. right, that's evidence of your theory. That, that's good evidence. Then another theory can come along and say, well, I can explain that this way. 
That's not evidence for the second theory. The second theory doesn't matter. They have to predict something new. You made the novel prediction. You have good evidence. They just explained away all the past stuff. That's called post hoc theorization, not good evidence. So if okay. you predict a god, you say, I, I think there's a god. I predict a gold brick. You see a gold brick. Good evidence of God. The fact that I could post hoc explain it and say, ah, I was a aliens or something, that would not eliminate your hypothesis. Your hypothesis would still be the most supported because you can make the testable predictions before we know them. And I didn't. Okay. I just explained them after. So, so let's get back to the example of the brick. We got everything has met the criteria that you're looking for. And then this, you're, and some, and, and a scientist concludes, well, this is evidence for the, this Hindu God of material possessions. Um, but you're, you said, uh, I don't know if you said it today, you either may have said it in the earlier debate. You said anything that a Christian can deposit as ex, can it use God to explain, you can explain naturally. So how would you explain naturally these bricks suddenly appearing over aliens over. i just said that aliens okay well that's that's a natural explanation for you yes aliens okay are physical aliens. okay so um i think uh i mean how would you verify anything at that point well i'd have to make novel i mean you would just you would aliens. just you would just say you would just say okay well, it was aliens so then all of a sudden this Hindu would have to say, no, it's not aliens. It didn't have to come up with another. No, no, the Hindu still, right. the Hindu, the Hindu still wins. The Hindu still wins. So, I so you would, so you would say, okay, the Hindu God exists at that point. Yes. There is more evidence for the Hindu God than for but, the aliens. But you just said you, predictions. I made post hoc predictions. So, so if I can okay. explain the evidence after the fact, that is not evidence of my hypothesis. The fact that they were made predictions before we knew them, that is evidence for their hypothesis. So they have evidence. I don't. I can explain it. I can make up explanations to explain it naturally. That's not evidence. Evidence so is why, novel testable predictions. So, so why would why would you say you could just deposit any natural explanation for something? Then? It's called the problem of underdetermination in science. It's like literally the whole point is that post hoc uh, explanations aren't evidence because anyone can make up an explanation of any okay. evidence. So you're just saying hypothetically you could do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I understand now. I just thought I just thought it seemed like you were setting up a bar that no one could possibly meet. Which, no, it's, it's just it's just a problem in science called the problem which, of determination. It has nothing to do with a bar. Which um which for me, uh, if you already said earlier that even if you had the evidence that this God exists, that the Christian God exists, you would still not be a Christian. Yeah, because a mass murdering dictator. So I, I you certainly. Oh yeah. So then at that po point, you I, I believe he existed. So, so that's still yeah. evidence he exists. Even if you have evidence like the gold brick thing, I would believe there's evidence he exists, but I wouldn't worship him. I'd say we need to get rid of him because he's an evil moral monster who drowned millions of babies. So but then, my then worshiping would... him and acknowledging he exists is not the same thing. Like even the devils in, in Christianity know God exists. They just don't worship him. So yeah. you can, those are two separate topics. So why, why would you think it would be better for you to believe that a God you consider immoral exists as opposed to just lacking belief in God. I if mean, if evidence, I would there's, base it off of the evidence. Yeah. But what you would consider that immoral because basically God would be coercing you at that point. So well, I mean, I have no idea what you're saying. If there's evidence like the gold brick thing, well, there's reason to believe God exists, but if the Bible <clears> is true and God drowned millions of babies, that's reason to think God is immoral. So I think God exists and he's immoral. Those aren't contradictory terms. Yeah, I understand that. But at, I mean, if you're, according to scripture, if you had proof God exists, it says every knee will bow and every tongue confess. So basically at that point, you would be, you would be coerced. And based on your model of morality, any imposition of will what, is immoral. So I, I'm what not would, following anything you're saying. Okay, well, we'll, we'll just move on. <clears throat> So I don't so know if, uh, I, if, 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 if I could. So it sounds like now that we've kind of come to this where we have this ability to make novel testable predictions and we agree that on both sides that that would, you know, account for reality or would you know sh show that th this is true in reality. Matt, are there things that you would say Christianity can make or has made novel testable predictions that you guys could talk about? Um. You mean from a scientific perspective? No, I don't I mean, know I'm, that I could. I'm just like, you don't obviously have well, to use I mean, this one. But yeah, like I, here's, here's how I approach it. If, if, Christian, if the teachings of Jesus Christ is accurate, there are certain things that I would expect to observe in reality based on what the Bible teaches that 
I think can be observed in reality. And that can kind of back up scripture. Does that prove scripture is true? I would, you know, no, obviously people, it wouldn't prove it in the sense that someone could still deny it. But it, I think it makes, it supports the evidence that the Bible, it supports we, the Bible. Yeah, maybe we could talk about a couple of those. Well, I mean, well, like I, I, brought, I, want to, I want to pick up on that. So what he just said was that if, if Christianity is true, there are certain things you expect about reality, which then lead towards Christianity. Like if it rained, I would expect to see the grass is wet. Oh, look, I see the grass is wet. Therefore it rained. Do you know which fallacy that is? Yeah. Which one? Similar, similar to that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So like, like when I asked you just a few minutes ago and I, and I did this for a reason, I asked if you, if, God were true, would you become a Christian if you had the evidence and you said no? Well, in Scripture, and you you viewed God as immoral. What does this have to do with the topic? Well, it, in, in Scripture, it talks about those who reject God what believing, does this have to do with the topic? viewing. Well, I'm saying that you can observe yeah, this he's... in reality. Yeah, I and, think he's and good. The, Go ahead, Matt. And the fact that you're actually verifying what Scripture would say as an atheist, I mean, an atheist says, or the Bible, you know, it says a fool says in his heart, there is no God. It mentions that twice, two times, Psalms 41 and Psalms 53. There's also another passage talking about those who who reject God. Uh, and, and then there's passages like, what is the almighty that we should pray to him? What benefit do we have praying to him? Kind of a mocking of God. And and I see this in reality in re with atheists, their response to God, kind of a almost um uh an yes, emotional make reaction fun of silly beliefs that is definitely true but that's true of all beliefs like if there's a Which, silly belief we make fun of it that isn't evidence it's true because people make fun of it i think what he's what, saying is and and just so that we're all clear i think what he's saying is that the bible in a sense predicts uh yes. that that okay, atheists yeah. will take this position and so atheists are taking this position Therefore, that's evidence. What? Yeah, that right, oh, my, mind blown. Yes. Not everyone accepts the position. Oh my God, magic. Well, it's the reaction to the position that it, I think is even more. Uh, nobody knew. Supports no, it. No, no, nobody like, knew. Uh, wait, 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 wait. So, so nobody well, knew that if you introduce a new idea, people are going to ridicule it. Never happened in any human history ever before. Not in, ever. It's the first time ever Christianity was the first introduced idea that people made fun of because they thought it was dumb. Never happened before. No, no, no history of that prior to the Bible. Well, nope. it doesn't. It doesn't refute the Bible. Is my point. It supports the Bible. Whether wow. it happened other things, it still supports the Bible. The sun will rise tomorrow, and that is written in the book of another, the monster. Another mm -hmm. one. Another but one it, that it would things be, that are known about human psychology, like by everyone in every society. Ah. Well, I, I mean, in. You know, there's there's let's just ignore the six day creation and, and the incorrect timelines and all of the factual falsehoods about history. But uh, no, but hey, it, it predicts I've, some I've, people won't believe it. I think you're it. kind of uh, I think you're kind of gish galloping here and trying to avoid the topic. Well, it's just um, one topic, so I'm staying on topic. Um, so so in re you were talking about reality. There's studies that have shown that, and and actually David brought this up in the last debate that atheists become emotionally uh, aroused when daring God to do. Uh, terrible things, and then there was a there were some studies where scientists have looked into atheism, and, and argues atheism is a psych is psychologically impossible because of the way humans think. Because humans are naturally drawn to kind of consistent okay, religious or super so, I don't care what supernatural. He says. He's wrong. I'm an atheist. I just disproved your point. So I, I can I can just in, annihilate your entire argument with one line: psychology isn't evidence you can't say people believe therefore it's true or people so don't believe, therefore it's you, true. you don't consider psychology whatsoever it's not evidence of metaphysics or ontology no no amount of so, people believing is evidence that it's true most people believe the world was flat it was not more likely to be true the world was flat when most people believed it it's not evidence that reality is with or without a god depending on how many people believe it. the belief is not evidence so when, that's, when that's all, every, all of the evidence you presented is some people believed like that's nice. That's not evidence. So when when Oxford done this this study where they where they looked at people through all walks of life uh, and seeing about beliefs and traditions and stuff like that. And they found that children, even as early as three or four, naturally are looking for purpose and meaning that this life, an evolutionary worldview doesn't have to offer. 
would that not be evidence that no, there is evidence of type one and type two fallacies that we literally know Delu about in psychology delusions as type you one said. and type two errors so the whole so you believe the whole judeo-christian western civilized ethics that we are built upon is built upon type one and type two errors yes every society okay. every human has ever built is based off of their societal evolutionary baggage that they made up to try and help them survive obviously so at, at that point there's just no importance for truth whatsoever I mean, if we can be successful, that, that doesn't make any sense. Built, I have no but, idea what you're saying there. Like, I mean, the at, that, at that point, who cares if who ca what would be the purpose of of trying to argue with a Christian as to the existence of God at that point? I mean, why would you money, bother even money, debating them? reason, rationality, pursuit of knowledge? There's lots of reasons, but what does that have to do with the topic? Again, that's just a, an well, appeal to uh, motive fallacy. You're just knocking the but, fallacies off one at a time. It's just some fallacy bingo here. But you're, de you're saying this is based off of type one and type two errors or delusions. Uh, I mean, what would yeah, be yeah, the delusions, purpose? Delusions can be beneficial. Like, for example, if I hear a rustle in the bushes. I agree. And I think it's a lion. I and I run I away, agree. I survive. So there's a fallacy, a delusion, a bias that was beneficial to survival. So we adopted that in our society. There can be false beliefs that help us to survive, like Christianity. So why would you want to change that at that point? Change it. I, I never cared I wanted to change it. I'm just saying it's false. I don't care if I change it. Okay, so... What is, what is, my, it, what is my motive have anything if, to do with the debate? What what is your motive for debating Christians? What what does with? my motive have to do with the debate? Why do you keep talking well, I'm about just, my psychology? I'm just just curious. I'm just curious. I do it for money. This is this is my job. Oh okay. Well, I mean, I so guess obviously if you get I don't paid want to it, eliminate then... Christianity because they're my job. I get paid to debate them, so I don't want to eliminate Christianity. But my motive has nothing to do with the debate. You presented nothing in the entire debate. You said their psychology, their beliefs. Oh goody. Well, I... Some people believe the world was flat. Does that mean it's true? No, the fact that people believe something is completely irrelevant. Like you, you need okay. to understand psychology. People's beliefs isn't evidence those beliefs are true. Okay, so we've got three minutes here uh, for the open conversation. Uh, why don't you make an argument as to why atheism is true? I did. Uh, and, and convince me, <clears throat> or at least try to convince me. I did. All of the models that best explain reality have nothing to do with a God. All of the models that explain all of the questions in physics I listed, all the ones that give an accurate description of reality, have nothing to do with a God. The ones that say that the universe, the multiverse, string theory, uh, de Broglie and polywave theory, nothing to do with a God. The ones that literally best explain all of the facts that we know about reality that are not imaginary do not include a God. Therefore, it's reasonable to conclude one of those is more likely to be true than any of the God models. I could read probably a month worth of physics, science, and all of this, and in the end... I would never conclude that atheism is true based on reading scientific journals. If you infer so I, that doesn't make the sense. science, you're that, on, you're oh, yeah, I wouldn't. Oh, so the I'm fact not, that you are irrational, I don't, I don't care about your irrational beliefs. It is irrational to infer anything beyond the science. You are going to infer stuff beyond the science. You are irrational. The rational position is to say, here's the best science that describes reality. This is the best conclusion about reality. Yeah, but I would, that, that wouldn't, I mean, I, I'm, what I'm saying is I can, I can keep my theology completely out of it. Yes, you and can add up made I can, nonsense to the science. And No, I wasn't. I'm talking about not adding up anything. I'm talking about just reading the scientific journals, what we have here. I can read all of this, and in the end, I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, I lack belief in the existence of God because of I don't care about your rationality. So, so I can take all of science, read all of physics, and say, I still believe in magical leprechauns on Alpha Centauri. Does, that doesn't matter. Like I'm still being irrational if I believe there are magical leprechauns on Centauri when there's no evidence to conclude. The rational thing to do is to follow the evidence wherever it leads. I look at the scientific evidence. I conclude things based off of the scientific evidence. If you have a different conclusion that isn't indicated by the evidence, you're being irrational. You're making stuff up. Anybody and that leads can make you, stuff up. That leads you to atheism. When you read science, that leads you to atheism. Yes. Yeah, so, so science is you follow the evidence wherever it leads. Once the evidence stops, you stop. So if you infer anything beyond the science, you're making stuff up. So if you're only looking at the evidence of like physics, nowhere in physics is there evidence of a God. So if you add in a God, you're making stuff up. Well, so, I'm not talking about even going into physics saying I'm looking for evidence for God. I'm talking about just reading the laws of physics, reading about physics, reading about biology, reading all of this other stuff. I can read all of this and still not infer that atheism is true. So this is, this is really simple. Uh, if you have evidence for one dog 
in the backyard. Uh, you could always conclude there's two dogs, but the only evidence is that there's one. And so you say the reasonable position says there's one dog and I'm going to stop at one dog. That is the reasonable position. Uh, to infer there's another dog is irreasonable. You're, you're, you're inferring things beyond the evidence. That's making stuff up. So if you're looking at science, you stop where the science stops. That's the laws. That, that okay. it. I mean, you don't add yeah. a God there. If you had a God, there, yeah, and, add... and I, I would not add atheism either to it. That's my no, point. Atheism isn't adding anything. It's just saying that's all there is. There's the laws, and we're stopping. The no, laws. atheism is a lack of belief in the existence of God. Right. It doesn't we're, say we're anything. I don't. In we we're not believing in anything beyond the laws. The laws are it. Okay, that, I mean, I, I like I said, I could take that uh, just a scientific explanation and, and not say that up. atheism is true. No, I wouldn't make. You could I, would, I could. I could. Stuff. I could be completely neutral on it and still not lead me to atheism. But I think the time's up here. <clears throat> Thank you, gentlemen. Habity, 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 who? Habity, who? What do you think, Eddie? What do you think? Hallelujah! <laughs> you, my friend, have spoken the gospel. Hold on, real quick. This is for the atheist troll. Real break, buddy. <laughs> Carl, just fake, jokes. I got fake brick. I'm like, who who fakes brick? Did you see Eddie like uh like broke his fist when he did that? You see that? And he's talking about fighting people. <laughs> I'm, hurt, I'm like, I'm all tender now. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Up there in old age. So I uh um yeah, I'll wait. I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll do what we normally do. I'll wait till the closing uh statements are done. Uh but up to this point. Shwetty Eddie, uh, what are your thoughts? How you feeling, man? I think that um, I'm gonna try to be kind. I'm gonna say there's nobody wins. <laughs> it's, uh, bro, I, I I don't know. I mean, it, given the back and forth, giving the you know, like I said earlier, um, I don't think that I think he Matt took you know the affirmative. And, uh, you know, sorry, Matt, love you, bro. But uh, it, it far from, you know, closing the deal, I just, I, I couldn't even follow a lot of it. I, ADD, I just, I couldn't follow a lot of it. And I think that's an advantage for Tom. Well, one, Tom's quick-witted. He's smart. Um, and he's very experienced. So I think it made for frustrating, but an easier win for him. Um, so, so yeah, before we go through the closing statements, I'll, uh, first thing I want to say is everybody in the chat tonight, uh, we, a couple of times we uh, went over the, uh, the hundred mark on a, on a Saturday night when the YouTube sphere is, uh, it's alive and popping. Um, so we appreciate you guys hanging out with us and uh, just a reminder that uh, Q and a will be uh, coming up here soon. Don't put your questions in yet uh, because with the amount of chats that are going on right now, um, I will lose them. Uh, so, so hold them until we announce to, to put those in there, but thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, it, it's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to, it's going to be an awesome ending. And, uh, one last time, March 20th, we have the tournament coming up for, uh, the ultimate debate championship tournament cash prize, a championship right. travel, traveling championship belt. And come watch, um, come watch me win it, baby. Taking it yeah, all. It's, it's, it's going to be awesome. So the, uh, the last part here is the, the, the closing statements, and, and this is when you get to put your, uh, you either put your ex exclamation point on this and, and uh, uh, drive drive your point home, or it's a swing and a miss. The, fi the finest a dogma found in Arkansas? Bro, that's imported from Little Rock. You get Eddie, it? Eddie, we're, we're talking about a debate, and you're still talking about that damn brick wall. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> what, kind, what kind of co-host are you? Bro, you're coming back on my show, and I'm clowning on you. <laughs> but uh, let's let's get it back on here. So uh, they will have ten yeah, minutes, uh, uh, ten minute closing statements, and then Eddie, you and I will uh, announce a winner loser, and then uh, we'll get into the Q and A. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's do it. All right. I guess, uh, I guess Matt, you go first. Muted again.
drop in and come back out. Come back in. My screen is locked up again. I How are you feeling, Tom? Yeah, well, I can just start mine. It's fine. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, well, apparently uh, he interpreted what best corresponds to reality to mean what most people believe. I mean, I don't even know why that would be a relevant topic to even debate. The fact that lots of people believe something has never been evidence before. I don't know why he considered it evidence today. The fact that lots of people believe the world is flat wasn't evidence of the world being flat. So why would we care what <clears throat> most people believe? I, I don't know why this is relevant, but okay, yeah, I'm happy to admit that yeah, most people in most history were Christians because they killed a lot of other people and made the most progress in the most resource-rich areas, which has absolutely nothing to do with its truth. So when talking about what actually corresponds to reality and not corresponds to people's uh, feelings and beliefs, the best conclusion is to follow the evidence wherever it leads and to not infer anything beyond the evidence, which is the mottos of science. And when we do that, we infer nothing but just the laws of physics and more physical stuff. Of course, anybody can add in whatever they want after the fact. You can add in magical leprechauns or God or Yahweh or whatever you want. But none of that's rational or supported. The best rational position to stop inferring about reality is to say reality is the physical stuff from the physical laws because that's what we can demonstrate exists and any, everything else. And the additions to that is purely imaginary. So I, I think atheism is a better position by a significant margin. And I don't think that he presented any evidence uh, at all other than just people's subjective beliefs if that counts for something i have no idea how it ever would since it's literally like the top 10 fallacies are all saying that people's subjective beliefs are not evidence for various reasons so i don't i don't even know how that counts as evidence uh yeah and i'll just i'll conclude there okay uh matt while you were out a gold brick appeared which is really interesting uh, i just thought we'd point that out but uh just kidding uh i think you're muted but uh, when you when you start talking, uh, you get your your ten minutes. Yeah, science has failed me twice tonight, so uh, I don't know if we can trust science very much because I've been booted out. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, I I think a lot of times Tom and I were talking past each other uh, because of the approach we had to the de the, the debate. But I think um, based on um, I think Josh understood pretty well based on his explanation. Uh, my argument necessarily wasn't that Christianity was true, uh, although I believe it's true. It's just what best corresponds with reality. That it was the title, which best corresponds with reality, Christianity or atheism. And when you look at the, f the foundations of Western civilization, especially, and even across the world for that matter, um, obviously I think Christianity far surpasses atheism uh, in reality. Now, Tom had talked about uh, reading up on, you know, physics and all of this. And in the end, he seemed to be arguing that that is atheism, but that is inferring too, because atheism is the lack of belief in the existence of, of God, usually a rejection of theism. Uh, so it's equally inferring if he's going to infer at the end that atheism is true. And I infer theism is true because of the consistency and orderly nature of the universe, then we're both equally breaking or violating what Tom was saying there. And I, what my argument was is I can read in science, I mean, uh, study a lot in science, and read it till I'm blue in the face. And in the end, I'm not going to say, oh, atheism is true. I mean, I, you know, I might not even necessarily say one way or the other. I can just say, okay, this is what, <clears throat> what scientists say based on their studies of the physical world. And uh, I, I mean, I know Tom and I disagreed. Um, like I said, there's a Berkeley article in which they specifically say that science cannot answer the questions of supernatural claims because that's outside of the realm of science because science deals strictly in the natural. So um, that, uh, you know, is just, uh, and he said I was wrong on that. But like I said, this is Berkeley, UC Berkeley. I think they're a pretty reputable organization. And I have seen other sources that have said the same thing before. Uh, but Tom had said uh, earlier, he would, even if he was, had the evidence, he would not uh, be a Christian. Uh, so in his reality, he would just simply reject Christianity, even if he had the evidence. Um, so that just goes to show that even evidence that would correspond with re reality doesn't mean he would accept the evidence uh, for reality.
Um, and, you know, I, I, to me, I think that Christianity demonstrates in reality far more precedence than, than atheism ever has. And I'll end with that. I just don't think there's anything else I can add there. <clears throat> well, I, he's, he kind of straw man me there. I wanted to address that. So if there was evidence for Christianity, I would accept the evidence for Christianity being true, that accepting the evidence is true, as I you explained and literally went over this in the, in the discussion, doesn't mean you have to be a Christian. You can accept God exists, which is what <clears throat> truth means, and not believe and be a Christian. So I would accept the evidence. That it was just wrong to say I wouldn't accept the evidence. I just wouldn't be a Christian based on the evidence. I wouldn't believe or worship the God. And would you acknowledge that the Christian, that Christianity influenced society at that point? I, I already acknowledge Christianity influenced society. Okay. But truth okay. is that which corresponds to reality. So if we're asking which better corresponds to reality, we're asking which is true, not which most people believe. Yeah, I, I never realized atheism was a truth claim. There but, no I mean, I, I don't think that, uh, I, I mean, that's a different debate, I guess. So what next? <clears throat> I'm, I'm done. Q&A time. Oz, where'd you go? <laughs> I like making them wait. I like that awkward pause where they yeah, just kind of y'all y'all chill. We're gonna come in here uh, with the uh, we're gonna be the pimps that walk in the room late. Yeah, they just, they just kind of stare. Like, what, stop scaring me, man. Steve scares me. Oh, no. He's one of those quiet but deadly people. <laughs> oh, this one's even worse. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, he put. Did you see he put the little <laughs> white thing on the axe? Come on. Oh yeah. Around and think about that. Now, do we have cause that? <laughs> oh man! Yeah, he uh, what was that? He put the little scope on, on the uh, the sight on the type of the on the top of the axe. Yeah, all them talking about this fighting crap, like you know, we're like ninety years old, like we're gonna freaking anybody's gonna do anything, and ain't nobody said nothing about Steve, who's you know rolled with the Gracies. I mean, come on. I'd rather fight Oz than Steve. <laughs> You're probably right. He's younger than me. That's a, yeah. He's, a, he's probably in better shape than both of us, too. Yep. Faux show. Faux show. All right. Well, uh, Eddie, uh, I, I always, you know, obviously we are the atheist roundtables. So we're the atheist channel. So I always give the uh, the theists, the Christians, whatever, the uh, the first the first go at it. What's your, uh, what, what say you? What say you, man? You know, I feel bad because I don't think I've ever voted that a theist won in the debates. Um, that closing changed everything. You know, I think uh, T jump loss. No, it's I, man. I just, it was too much confusion. There was, I, I, I couldn't follow exactly where um, Matt was going with it. Um, I mean, Matt gave it a good effort. Uh, he had, I think, you know, he had some good rhetorical uh, responses, but, you know, those who aren't, you know, into philosophy and things like that might have missed him. I, Tom doesn't. I mean, he he called him. Um, but just, I mean, style, uh, quickness, uh, wit, intellect, man, Tom takes it. It's, it's, uh, we're going to have to get some theists on here who can debate, man. Um, yes. So, so for me, and, and I, I just take a very, it doesn't matter to me what the argument is. Uh, we, we could be, uh, it could be a debate on, uh, Santa Claus. It, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. It's who, who better, again, who better presents their argument, um, and, and stays on topic. And, and for this one, uh, I, well, first of all, I, I always like to say that, that you know, uh, T jump comes prepared every time. I, th I think he rolls out of bed prepared to debate. I think it's just it's the brain debates way. people are playing games. <laughs> <laughs> it's so same. Uh and, and Matt and, and Matt uh same thing came you know uh came well prepared opening statement and, and I, I always do appreciate that uh especially for you know uh because 
yes, he's representing himself, but also representing our channel when he comes on here because we're putting this out to the to the public. So I appreciate when people are prepared and ready to go. So I do have to always give a tip of the cap to that because we have people that don't do that. Um, and they don't they don't come on ready. They're, they don't come on prepared. Uh, but, but actually, uh, what the reason I'm going to give this to uh, to T Jump is because the the question was, uh, you know. Uh, which better corresponds to reality. And I felt like Matt's argument actually more confused me than brought me to a point of uh, understanding how it would correspond. Uh, and it shouldn't, it should not add to the confusion. Uh, it should uh, eliminate that, uh, you know? So I think that's something that, you know, uh, for the next debate, Matt can go, go back and say, okay, how can I make this a little more simplistic? Uh, maybe uh, the questions more directed towards the topic, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know that, that that's going to come down to, to him and his, uh, his style, but that's, that's my takeaway on it. Um, that's, that's what I got out of it. And, um, even watching the comments and everything from, from both sides, you know, the, the theist and the atheist, uh, it wasn't just, uh, you know, just, uh, my opinion, I, I feel like that was across the board, but, uh, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll say that. And then, uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, make sure you tag me. Uh, so at Oz in uh, uh in the chat and we can start asking some questions here in a second uh but uh eddie i'm gonna give you one more chance to uh to freestyle and dance for uh, for everybody while we wait for questions so go ahead and give it to us yeah it's hard doing it chair man i'm sorry my, my rhythm left with my age it just that's okay know. that's okay I'm, I'm getting ready to bring uh I'm getting ready to bring Tom on here. I know Tom will deliver. Um, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got to see that. Uh, real <laughs> quick, I think so. this is very important uh, to, to throw this out there. This is why defining terms is so important. Not just definitions, but what you're talking about being clear and concise, because I think there was a whole lot of talking past each other. Um, and that can be, you know, cleared up in the beginning of it. So... Well, and credit to to Dr. Josh, and he he did have to uh, to bounce out. Uh, yeah, got to the final uh, final round. Yeah, he's got to do some work, but uh, uh, I, I felt like he did a great job of trying to assist there. Uh, just, I just I don't feel like we ever got to home plate, you know. Um, and oh my God, why is my computer doing that? Stop it! Oh, <laughs> I'm just glad he moderated and not me. <laughs> I might have just I might have said Oz, take me out of the stream. Let them go at it. <laughs> just... <laughs> yep. So, uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's get the guys back up here and uh, we'll do uh, whatever questions we get here in the chat. We'll ask and then uh, we'll we'll rock and roll. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, let me see what. Uh... Let me see what I got for us here in the, the for the cues. In I the actually, a. I got a question. So, uh, yes. in philosophy, truth is defined as that which corresponds to reality. Uh, so, it seems like to me that the title of the debate is asking, "Is Christianity true?" Because truth is that which corresponds to reality, like literally the title of the debate. So, it seemed like you wanted to debate more, which has more of an impact on society, and so you should you should phrase it that way if you want to debate which has more of an impact on society that should be the that's the title you should ask for if that's the topic well i mean yeah i think there was some confusion there but if it has the most impact in own society then i would say it also corresponds with reality as well so mm -hmm. that's kind of that was kind of my take like i said earlier if these you know these people whether it was true or not they believed that Jesus Christ was the divine son of God who rose from the dead and they based their beliefs okay. on that. And it transformed, it transformed our reality as we know it today. So that was kind of the approach I took. Maybe that was a confusing approach and maybe no, we it should. wasn't your approach. It was just the title. So the title okay. in philosophy, like, do you disagree with the definition? Truth is that which corresponds to reality. Is that, are you, is that a fair definition of truth? Um, yeah, I suppose. Well, I mean, you're asking a Christian. I don't necessarily use philosophy. I mean, I believe that Jesus Christ is the truth. But if you're if you're talking philosophy, then sure, we can go with that. Okay. All right. So, I mean, question. yeah, go ahead. We we have a super chat uh, from James is tuckered. He's a little he's a little tuckered. He's a little, a little tucker. Tom. 
what's the best evidence that God does exist? Well, actually, I'd consider the best evidence to be the Hare Krishna evidence, the one by Siddharth. He makes predictions that the Hindu religion was able to accurately predict the origin of the earth within like 0.01% or whatever. And then he has his own little model that, that predicts some other thing, which I'm not, which I'm skeptical about. But that the best evidence for God that anyone has ever presented in any religion is that Hinduism was able to predict the age of the earth within extremely high accuracy, saying it was 4.5 billion years old when the earth is actually 4.8 billion years old. That's the absolute best evidence that anyone has ever presented for a God. Uh, it's pretty terrible, but that is, it qualifies as evidence. So, All right. And, and uh, while I'm scrolling, I'll read it and then I'll pull it up if I can find out why I'm scrolling. Another one from uh, James is Tired, a uh, question for T-Jump. How is a lack of belief... Uh, in a position. Hold on, let me read that. How is a lack of belief a positive position to speak to any position? It's a lack of position, correct? Well, I was, I'm again, I said I'm happy to take both definitions of atheism here, so I'm happy to take the strong one. If there's no evidence for a God, the reasonable position is to include there is no God. Like if there's no evidence for unicorns or Santa, it's reasonable to include there is no unicorns or Santa. If all of the best models that actually describe reality include just physics, you should stop at physics and say, that's it. It's just <clears throat> physics or infer more physics, not infer a God. So, so the most reasonable position given atheism or given science is continue the same pattern of more materialism forever. No God to conclude there is no God. It's just more material stuff. That's the most reasonable position. So there is no God. The atheism, I was taking the hard atheism one for this debate. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, and then here we go. Uh, super chat. Thank you very much, Atheist Cats. Five dollars. Question for Matt: Would would your argument have been more successful if you focused on T Jump argument here instead of past debates? Instead of past debates, um, well, I didn't. My opening wasn't focused on past debates. I made my opening statement. So no, I don't think that it would have been more successful. I mean, when you get into the conversation you know, it could lead down different paths. And, and obviously, you know, certain things he said in the past, I thought was kind of beneficial here, such as the, the uh, brick praying for a brick thing. I, I find that kind of problematic, uh, but he doesn't. But uh, I, so I thought it would be good to focus on that. Okay. Um, hold on, I had one more here. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Hey, Matt, every time you turn your head, your mic brushes up against your shirt, and we hear, like, static, just so you know. Oh, uh, Tom, do uh, does your um, does your ability to debate and crush every opponent come from your chair? Yes. All right, and a uh, question, uh, Tom Jump. Have you heard of supreme naturalism? If you have, nope. what are your thoughts on it? Nope. Never heard of it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to read that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need some entertainment. Come on, baby. Read it. <laughs> uh, question for Eddie. What's it like always having to try to bite at Oz's ankles? <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Yeah, that's for you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we'll do this last one here uh, my, for my buddy, Jim uh, T jump is your chair God or is it as close to God as we will ever get? Uh, there's no evidence. It's God. That's why I'm an atheist. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to have Perfect. a debate about T jumps chair. T jumps <laughs> chair is going to be the next topic of debate. Cool. All right. Well, uh, I don't see anything else here. Um, all right, well, we already did uh, closing statements, but anytime we do a debate, I always like to give the debaters uh, one uh, one last time to uh, plug their stuff, say thank yous and, and all that. Matt, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start with you. Anything else uh, you, you would like to say? And, and this is not a, another closing argument. Just uh, anything you want to plug, talk about uh, before we go. Uh, no, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I always enjoy... Uh debates uh i know typically when i'm in debates i'm they usually say i lost the debate but it doesn't really bother me i still enjoy uh, making the argument and uh i'd like to do it again sometime maybe uh, may maybe tom and i can 
tackle the morality argument sometime. <clears throat> Ooh. Ooh. That's By morality, good. you mean right and wrong, not potatoes, right? Just Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I guess the standard for morality. What maybe what's the best standard for morality? Uh, morality, the Christian tradition or your uh, your standard? Because I find your standard kind of interesting. So we could debate that. I love taters. I love taters, Tom. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that'd be but, a good press debate that nobody's heard before. Oh, hold on. Everybody stop. Pause. Everybody. Tom's chair is in the back. <laughs> it's got its own post. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom, so, can your chair come on to my show? Just a chair. Uh, <laughs> Just yeah, the but chair. it charges. You got a charge. It's like $100 an hour, I think. Oh, ooh, ooh. Hey, I make good money. I might be able to swing it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, Tom, anything you got coming up here that uh, you want anybody to know about? Uh, I don't have any idea. Like, I have it saved in my calendar, and then I pull it up the day of and go to it. So I think I have something on Monday with uh, Atheist Edge, Jim, oh, cool. and Stephen Hoyt, something about properly basic beliefs. You know. Sweet. Ooh, reformed epistemology. Ooh. Or just proper uh, functionalism. And one last plug, Eddie and T-Jump will be part of the, the first debate tournament on the 20th. Uh, and Tom already told me he's going to destroy Eddie and everybody in his path to that five or $600. No, he's not. Uh, so we'll get put out in the first round. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, But no, we're. Uh, I need like one or two uh, more debaters. We've got a couple people had to drop out. And I need a few more uh, judges and mods. And then uh, we'll... Uh, we'll, we'll get it on, but uh, thank you guys so much for the conversation tonight. And uh, as always, this is the Atheist Roundtable. Eddie, anything you want to say? Plug before we go. Uh yeah, y'all can visit me at Brew Facts on YouTube. I go live every Tuesday, seven Central, and every podcast platform. And I'm trying to get special people on, like the guy down in the corner there. We'll see. Uh, maybe it'll work out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. Don't go to that channel. No, I'm kidding. Go, I, yeah, go check out Eddie. <laughs> go I'm going to go take your keyboard away from you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you guys for uh, watching and hanging out with us tonight. And uh, uh, we'll see you next time we go live with another debate. Peace out.